Uh, still the breakfast and plus TV Africa, like we mentioned, uh, we'll be back with the papers. At this point, we go through the pages of the national dailies and uh, bring you great insight, uh, courtesy of our analyst or our guest analyst. We'll have Tunde Kolawale who joins the conversation. But also, uh, I have Kofi Battels who joins also the show this morning as we proceed. Kofi, it's good to have you join me. Uh, fantastic. Uh, also to have Tunde Kolawale on the line with us and as we go through the pages of the National Dailies. Um, Mercy, it's quite interesting what's been happening. We've been away for some time, uh, but um, the National Discourse has been uh, of uh, an interesting um, note, on an interesting note. We'll look at some of the papers. Let's start off with uh, a story coming from um, the Leadership newspaper. The story is coming on the front page of the Leadership uh, newspaper this morning. The big one there with uh, Kika Fiorori of our APC running mate. A Muslim Muslim ticket recipe for more crisis northern christians won i mean uh, the northern christians especially those in the apc 19 states governed by the apc is saying that uh, they will not um, campaign for the presidential candidate of the party they're not happy and a kicker to that headline uh, demand immediate replacement of shatima vow not to sell same faith ticket to constituents let's shun religious ethnic politics till campaign group replies and more APC members resign in protest. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting. In, in River State, one of them resigned. Uh, uh, Toya Principal, he's um, a former governorship candidate of the Labour Party, switched to the APC um, and uh, was a loyalist, became a loyalist of Amechi. He said because of this, this uh, whole thing of Muslim Muslim ticket, he's leaving the party. Uh, interesting times for the APC. More headlines from the leadership. Uh, FG orders contractor to complete 194-kilometer Yola Mubi Road project. All right, so now they've told him, I'm sure he will, uh, he will complete it. Voluntary asset declaration, FG goes after tax defaulters. Low remittances, mass state's enactment of pension scheme. Oshun Po, INEC issues 1.5 million PVCs as IGP deploys 21,000 officers. Northern youth oppose sale of five power plants. The terrorists we pamper today will kill us tomorrow. Uh, remember Dumibi Kachiku, um, the presidential candidate of um, ADC. I hope we've not forgotten him. He's, he's also still in the race. Six to one thousand Boko Haram suspects, or suspects rather, detained in northeast Aregbe Shola. Six to one thousand Boko Haram suspects detained in northeast. Um, he is in charge of the military interior. The prison service is one of the, uh, the you know, priorities of state under him. I'm sure, this is in response to the Kujay incident. Photo story of Governor Ozodima's designer watch, wristwatch. It's an interesting one. I'm sure people would like to would like to really can find details uh, in the leadership. All right, let's move away from the leadership quickly. Uh, turn attention to the Punch newspaper uh, this morning. On the punch, Ogun governorship elections, please declare war on vote buyers and deploy dictators. Uh, sometimes you begin to wonder what is going on with uh, the country in Nigeria. I mean, is that the approach? If you understand uh, the reason why a lot of people engage in vote buying, then um, should that be really, really the approach um, in a tackling the situation. As much as we say, hey, those who are involved in buying votes and selling votes should be apprehended, but don't we think that we need to move beyond the level of arrest and threat to um, under making the people understand the essence and the need for, um, you know, not selling their votes. We have mobilized FIB operatives against uh, vote buyers. Force PRO is quoted over 23,100 security officials are deployed as Oshun prepares for governorship polls. And some people ask where, um, where, I mean, this personnel, I mean, where are you talking about 23,100 security officials when the Koji Correctional Center was attacked? Vice President Yemo Shibajo, Aregba Shola absent, Tunubu APC governors, uh, governorship rally support for Oyetola. Uh, you have uh, this person's not present there. Away from that, Muslim Muslim ticket, a disastrous error. Ex SGF Lawal is quoted 
oil falls below $100. Nigeria's production hit 1.158 million barrels per day. New Peng threatened solidarity strike with ASU. Uh, just as you, you know, some days back, you also have the health workers saying that we'll embark on solidarity strike uh, if uh, the government fails to get into that implementation of the agreement with ASU. Blames or blame Nigerians for voting bad leaders. Goats don't vote, a senator as good to say, find out which of the senators to speak in here. And just before we move away from uh, the punch newspaper this morning, you find stop lobbying for posting. National Assembly warns workers. 18 Catholic priests kidnapped, three killed in 2022. 18 Catholic priests kidnapped and three killed. Really saddening. Nigeria records 27 cases of vaccine-deprived polio. And you find uh, Christian Christian Ticket would have set Nigeria on fire. Uh, I take that again. Christian Christian Ticket would set Nigeria on fire. Uh, that's what you find on the Punch newspaper this morning. And uh, federal government plans 3,863 megawatt boost for power greed. So, so we're going to add 3,000 plus. How many are we generating? Mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> mercy. Um, I want to ask you: Have you been have you been having constant electricity in the past few days? I have been having uh, electricity supply, but more, not constant. But more than more than usual, right? No, I think it's reduced. Oh wow! Usually, Me because for for where okay, I live, okay, okay. the axis that I live. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> sure. I don't um, want to say anything before before they, they realize. You know, let's just keep it under the under the wraps. But <laughs> I think in some parts of the country, it's been uh, improved. You know, especially where I live. I hope. They're not watching. Is it the Kesha Electric or Co? I don't know which one. <laughs> you know, I hope you're not watching. No, but where I live, it's been almost constant, especially with these rains. Uh, it's been. Let me let's keep quiet before someone changes their mind. Well, we need to move away now <laughs> yes, because yes. we have Tunde Kola Wale on standby. Tunde Kola Wale, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Good morning, my brother. Yes. Hope you had a lovely night. We, we, yeah, fantastic. We we tried our best. <laughs> we tried our best. You know. Thank um, you. Yes. Let, let, let's start with. Um, very well, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, let, let's start off with the stories coming from uh, the leadership. Um, it's been in the papers, a lot of papers carried this story, um, you know, throughout the day, you know, the latter parts of yesterday online and now in print this morning. Uh, some group in the APC saying uh, yeah, the Christians in the All Progressives Congress are withdrawing their support for the party's presidential candidate on account of the Muslim Muslim ticket of the party. Apart from that, of course, uh, the uh, Tinubu campaign group is saying that um, uh, they should shun religious and ethnic politics. What are your thoughts on this? Well, honestly speaking, if a political party had decided to choose a Babalawo and a Marabut to fly ticket, and those people are able to deliver to our people the different the dividends of democracy. It will not have bothered me at all. But the truth of the matter is, in the last seven years, since the advent of, um, especially since the advent of the Mohammed Bukhari, the Nigerian society, the Nigeria as a country, has become hypersensitive to religious issues. So, any political party that wants to ensure inclusiveness must be sensitive to this hypersensitivity to the religious bickering in the society today. You must also remember that um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria emphasizes the federal character principle. It also says that the resources of the nation, whether woman or material, is going to be equally and equitably distributed among all the constituent parts of the country. So because of this, I would have thought that the APC or any other political party for that matter will not, will not have gone for a Muslim-Muslim ticket because it is a recipe 
for disaster. Not just that it will make it difficult for the party to win the next election, but also that when they win the elections, it may be a recipe for political instability in Nigeria. Because whatever actions that the government might take, whether the action is positive or negative, whether it is meant to benefit the people or not, people will always read meanings into it that they are taking such positions or they are embarked on such actions simply because it is the Muslims that are in charge of the running of the country. Furthermore, and uh, this could be very important, is that uh, you will remember that there was a time that a Boko Haram commander was arrested in the promoted governor's lodge in Abuja. And after he was arrested, he was handed over to a deputy commissioner of police who went here to release him. Who was governor at that period in time when this Boko Haram man found himself in the governor's lodge in Abuja? How did he have access to that governor's lodge? So, if we are able to unravel this, it might be a pointer that some of these people that we think are not having anything to do with these Boko Haram people might actually, in fact, be the ones that are giving logistic support, financing, supporting, and shielding these uh, Boko Haram people from prosecution or from punishment that the laws are prescribed for the activities. So, thirdly, and also important too, the decision to choose a Muslim Muslim ticket, in my humble opinion, is contemptuous for the Christian community in Nigeria. Before the choice, all the Christian associations and all that have insisted that there must be a balance for them to have peace of mind, for them to be able to get the assurance that Christians in the country will not be victimized come 2023 uh, election. So when the political party basically decides to discountenance the sentiment of the millions of Christians that we have all over Nigeria, for me, I think that is not too good enough. It's uh, contemptuous, it's impunity, it's a recipe for disaster mm. in the nearest future. Tunde Kolawale, oh, um, yep. th that, that's okay, let's just move away from that and All right. uh, pay attention to the Oshun governorship elections. Now, uh, yeah. we have the porch saying that the police is declaring war on vote buyers and has deployed dictators. Uh, we understand how this has crippled the electoral process and our democratic setting as a country, vote buying. But of course, the vote buying does not happen with the other party, uh, those who are inducing voters to actually buy votes. So, but, but do you think that this is going to put an end to vote buying uh, as we no, inch closer to 2023, so. especially, uh, uh, you know, with your Shun state elections? Look at the armada of security forces that were deployed during the recent AKT gubernatorial election. Did this stop the politicians from finding a way around the voters and purchasing their votes? The answer is no. The truth of the matter is, when politicians want to compromise the integrity of the election, they will force by the security forces. And then they will also unleash their military group on the voters before they think about buying the voters. So even if the voters refuse to be purchased, then their military group will be unleashed on the people, either to start snatching the ballot boxes, or either to start uh, disrupting the processes of election where they think their political opponent has a massive support, or they make the whole process very, very ungovernable, as we have seen in some parts of the country in the past. More importantly, 
you, I am of the opinion that even the decision of the APC to choose a Muslim, Muslim ticket is because they do know that the voters don't matter when it comes to electioneering and uh, 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 winning election in Nigeria. If you see that the elections are purchased in the Bazaar or military group are compelled, I mean, military group compel voters to vote for a particular political party or a political party, or the security people will turn a blind eye when representatives of this political party will write out all the ballot boxes and sit in the corner where the voting has to be taking place and some print all the ballot papers and throw into the ballot boxes and then also compel our neck officials to count those ballot boxes and record this as victory for whatever political party has the most dominant enforcers and military group around that voting environment. So, I don't, whatever our next uh, plans might be, as soon as they take one step forward, those who don't want a free and fair election, because they know any day we begin to have a free and fair election in Nigeria, they will be out of business. They would have taken 10, five steps ahead of INEC to make sure that the voters don't count, that the voters, that the voters are not reckoned with, that they can decide the direction with the pendulum of victory mm. will swing, okay. no matter what the voters might be thinking, or no matter whom the person they might want to vote for. Okay. So All I right. don't think, a, I don't see an option will be different from a kitty state. Say that to the marine. All right. So, to Nicola, let, 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 that's interesting analysis from you. Um, back to the leadership newspaper, uh, the Minister of Interior, uh, uh, Raul Farebeshola, has been speaking, and I'm sure it has, uh, it's not unconnected to um, uh, what recently happened under his watch in Kujay Prison. The headline from the leadership newspaper, front page at the bottom uh, uh, right corner, it says 61,000 Boko Haram suspects detained in Northeast, Arabia Shola. A few lines from that, this is what leadership is saying. Uh, Minister of Interior Ogbeni Rao Arabia Shola has said, Nigeria is on the path to totally defeating Boko Haram terrorists and other criminals in the country. He said many of the terrorists have been arrested, especially in the Northeast zone. The minister made the claim yesterday when he visited Kirikiri maximum and medium security custodial centers in Apapa, Lagos State. He said, quote, uh, today, a call of the criminal elements and insurgents across the country are on a path to defeat, and they have been heavily degraded. Over 61,000 of them are in our custody in the Northeast, he said. Um, you think he's feeling the heat from, from what happened in Kujia? That's why he has to say this. Uh, what's your analysis of this, uh, Kutune Kolawole? And honestly speaking, I will take with a pinch of salt whatever the Minister of Interior, Mr. Raoul Valipesola, says. I take it with a pinch of salt for so many reasons. If you look at him, without being told, he is one man who is also or who can be described as a religious fundamentalist himself. I think he belongs to the public group, those who serve us, hardly reach their uncle. And also remember, when he was in Oshun State, it was on his governorship that the issue of hijab became a fundamental issue. And the peace that was necessary for good education and good governance, began to elude us in state. So when such a man talks about the Boko Haram and then the need for peace and what efforts they are making to reign in the Boko Haram, I don't believe him. I never believe him. Furthermore, not too long ago, when he had his part with uh, his leader, that is George Bola Tinubu. Remember what he said in some of the papers that uh, when the leader began to maltreat him or something, he spoke with Allah, and Allah began to 
disgraceful, embarrassing man with some of the health challenges uh, that he had. You know? So, for me, he hasn't shown any inspiring leadership. Look at ordinary passport that uh, is, um, I mean, that the immigration is in the custom issues to people. Not too long ago, some Nigerians protested abroad that since he became minister, they've not been having access to passports. Here in Nigeria too, I have tried several days to renew my passport in the last uh, one year or thereabout. It's not been easy. The crowd is uh, something else when you go to each of the passport office. And I don't see myself subjecting myself to the kind of humiliation that you go through when you go to get a passport or you go to you need a passport. For me, Raul Valley Bachelor is not neutral when it comes to religious uh, or this Islamic uh, issues uh, matter. Whatever he says regard, with regard to Boko Haram, I take with a pinch of salt. And in fact, it's shocking to me that Mr. President would appoint such a person as Minister of Interior. All right, uh, but let's move away to the past sector where, you know, there's been uh, a lot of talks as regards generation and distribution and who should be blamed and who should be in control right now of distribution. But we also see that the federal government is saying uh, on the punch that it's making plans of uh, 3,863 megawatts to boost power grid. This is according to the report, and that's going to be in the next 24 months. Uh, if we look at the capacity currently produc producing now, uh, what we produce is about 4,000 megawatts. I mean, 4,000 plus megawatts, that's what we're talking about. And what we have as a capacity to produce is within 8,000 uh, megawatts. And government is saying, hey, in the next 24 months, we're going to you know, ensure that there's uh, capacity, additional uh, 3,800. Right there. But do you think that this really stops the situation? I mean, Kofi, <laughs> Kofi actually asked me a question of whether I've had constant power supply. So do you think that this would address okay. the issue of, um, you know, epileptic, epileptic power supply across the entire country? Yes, Lady Messi, I had uh, you and my brother there exchanging banter with regard to the improvement in uh, power supply in your respective areas. And I just laughed. Why did I laugh? It is a Greek gift. They wanted to use it to bribe you people to either keep you silent with regards to their Muslim Muslim tickets or with regards to the forthcoming election in Nosu State so that people will not go to the polls and vote against them. And then furthermore, you will recollect that a few weeks ago, the National Electricity Regulatory Authority has uh, revoked the license of the Edo uh, Power Generator, I mean, I mean, distribution company. I think they have also taken over some other companies yes. Yes. in the northern part of the country. It is not impossible that that wielding of very big stick may have sent jitters down the spine of some of these other electric distribution companies that they have now decided to be a little bit more effective in the distribution of power in the last few days. Furthermore, they are talking about 8 megawatts, 11 megawatts. Isn't that what they have been talking about in the last seven years? For God's sake, isn't that what they've been talking about? And what is 8,000 megawatts? 8, 8, megawatt? or 11,000 megawatts in a country that is about 200 million people. What is it on there? I mean, 8,000, 11,000 megawatts. I was watching television yesterday because the German people thought or are thinking that Russia may cut off their gas supply, which is going to affect the electricity supply. They are going to revive all their coal-fired electricity generation plan. They've resuscitated them. So you know what happened in Nigeria? When we uh, built the Kanji power dam and Shiroro power dams and some of these other dams and all that, our airlines went and scrapped our coal generated electricity plant 
as you are there. And then one, I think one other one from other parts of the country. The nation that has foresight will never do that. And if it's a gas supply in the country, if there is a dam in the country, I've not been able to guarantee stable electricity supply. Is it these 22 years of democracy in Nigeria not enough to resuscitate the coal plants to supply energy to do um, uh, some of these other alternative energy sources like solar and water? Have you? I was reading some papers the other day that within three months you can get uh, solar energy to supply you megatons of uh, of uh, of uh, power. You can also use the wind and so many other alternative sources of energy. Why are we not looking in that direction? We are not looking in that direction simply because those who import generators in this country who not want us to have stable electricity supply. We are not looking in the direction of solving electricity challenges in the country simply because when we stop it, the consumption of petroleum products will drop and these people will not be able to import petroleum products which they used to do money laundering to carry money abroad to pay their children's school fees and buy houses in Monaco, in Miami, and some of these eyebrow Dubai uh, countries of, of, of the world. The Nigerian allies, the political parties, whether it be the, the PDP or the APC, are not interested in resolving the electricity crisis that we have in our hands. The electricity crisis is not rocket. I mean, it's something that can be resolved within one year or two. It is not rocket science. You can get energy supply from so many sources. Coal, wind, solar, gas, uh, dam, uh, hydro, and what have you. So don't uh, fall for the agreed gift of uh, this uh, uh, improvement in power supply in the last uh, few days. It is a great give, it is a pride, either to compare or to tell people to vote for them in Moshu State, or to overlook their Muslim Muslim ticket, or simply just to divert attention. You're, from the hunger yeah. and anger. <laughs> you're you're certainly not land. buying it. Uh, you're certainly not buying it, Tunde <laughs> Uh But maybe this may, may be an indication of your words or comments that um, maybe the power supply has improved in your part uh, of, of the country. <laughs> I don't know if you say that. It's but... usually like that. Also, don't forget that during the rainy season, most of the dams, there is improvement in water collection in there. And when there's improvement in water collection, it usually translates into improvement in, uh, in power supply. That may be what we are saying, because rain has been falling for some few weeks now, which would have improved the power, I mean, the water uh, collection in all the dams that we have in the country, and which will enable these uh, dams to generate more electricity, which could be distributed to different parts of the country. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, let's go back to the punch. Um, we stay with, uh, with, with, with the economy of business stories now. This one is talking about the oil price. You look at the top of that front page, the very top of that front page, this headline, oil falls below $100. Nigeria's uh, production hits 1.158 million barrels per day. The paper says that Brent, which is the international benchmark for crude, uh, fell below $100 per barrel on Tuesday, as the latest figures released by OPEC shows an increased or increase in Nigeria's oil production from 1.024 million barrels per day to 1.158 million barrels per day. Um, of course, you remember that uh, this administration is uh, from time to time would always to tell you that um, uh, uh, oil was $100 per barrel in the time of Jonathan, you know, even with this asset talking, he has been saying when the promise to, was, to Maso was made for that 1.3 trillion naira, um, oil was $100 per barrel. So sometimes we forget that it had gone, it gone back to $100 per barrel. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, falling below the $100 per barrel mark for Nigeria, uh, upping its production to 1.158 million barrels per day. Well, um, I think the war between Russia and Ukraine uh, is been having some impact on the supply and demand for oil all over the world. That may have had uh, 
some significant uh, implications for the rise in the prices of uh, petroleum products or crude oil around the world. But you and I will know that that is a temporary thing. It is nothing, it is not something that will last forever. A nation which allies are diligent, a nation which allies are prudent, a nation which allies has vision, would, when they have this kind of a windfall or improvement in, in the prices of uh, crude products around the world, they will save whatever effects that they are having. They will cut their coat according to the size of their clothes. But that has never been our attitude as a people. When we had the windfall during the Jonathan era, monies were simply made available to the state government, to the local government. And what did they do with the money? Rather than invest it, the state government bought cars for wives of local government chairmen, for their supporters, and also the bulk of the money was siphoned uh, abroad. Rather than investing the money in uh, infrastructure, in industry, in solving the electricity challenge that we have in the country, in improving the educational sector, the health sector, all of which have become comatos in the recent, uh, I mean, uh, over a long time uh, uh, now. So I'm also shocked that we as Nigeria continue to talk about petroleum, 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 when the rest of the world is no longer looking in the direction of petroleum. Most of them are talking about alternative energies now. Very soon, and you may want to take this down, Petroleum product will be like a coal. Most of the advanced countries of the world today, what they are doing is driving electric cars, which doesn't use a petroleum product. Israel, if you don't know, has now manufactured hydro car, a car that will use ordinary water to power it. There are solar cars around the world now, and uh, not too long ago, I was also reading some researches being done in South Africa, in which the ocean waves are going to be continualized and used to power uh, vehicles, just like uh, we now use gas to power some of these uh, uh, vehicles and household uh, uh, items. So, but our allies, they are indolent, they don't have a vision, they, they are greed and kind of uh, blinded them to the reality. So stop thinking about petroleum and look at alternative sources of energy to meet the challenges that we have, not just in uh, electricity supply, but also in developing our infrastructure. I continue to say it. education is the bedrock of development. If we want to develop, we must invest massively in the educational sector, especially tertiary education, because it is from those places that solutions will be found for the challenges that society is facing, whether it be in the health sector, whether it be in electricity supply, or whether it be in the area of infrastructure. Take, for example, these interlocking stones that uh, people now use in their houses. It's not just some people in the civil engineering uh, sector that came up with the idea that, look, if it is difficult or if building will not last in turning roads or in uh, paving and the access to houses and all that, why don't we use it and lock it stone? And that may have come from any of the universities or any of the polytechnics. That is what those institutions are established. So do provide solutions. Anytime a society is facing challenges, the educational sector will rise to the to those challenges and provide solutions to it. But here, for us, education could as well go to rot. It doesn't matter. So long as our allies are able to get their own children awards abroad to go and school, and then they take photographs of those children when they graduate and splash it in our faces, 
and ask us to go to hell. Uh, you, you can do whatever you All like. Right, Wale, uh, yeah. ju just before we uh, we move away from the paper, yeah. uh, looking at the big stories this morning, just a quick thought on this one. Uh, on the leadership, terrorists we pamper today will kill us tomorrow. Kachuku is quoted on that. It feels like the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more, uh, somewhere from the scripture. But does this really mean that um, any way indicts the government? Does he tell that, you know, as the government and the people were pampering and harboring this terrorist? Well, it is obvious. It's very, very obvious. I give an example when we began this program, that at a time, a Boko Haram commander was arrested in the Polonus State Governor's Lodge in Abuja. After he was apprehended, he was handed over to the Deputy Commissioner of Police, who also released him. It was when there was so much pressure on that Commissioner of Police that this Boko Haram commander was recalled back and brought into custody. I am sure, I think his name was Kabiru Sokoto or Alaba. I am sure he would have also escaped during this Kujay jail break. Uh, look at what Abacha, a former military of state, said one time that any anywhere in the world that uh, insecurity persists for so long, for more than one week, you could be less assured that some powerful people are aiding and affecting it. I mean, each time these people are arrested, rather than bring them to justice in accordance with the law. We say we are rehabilitating them. We say we are re-educating them. A paper, during this QJJ break, also reported that one Boko Haram man got recruited into the Nigerian prison service and that that Boko Haram person may have facilitated or provided the logistics that made it possible for this QJJ break or attack to have taken place. I haven't seen any decisive action being taken against the Boko Haram, not just on the part of the government. There isn't any serious political will to so deal decisively with these insurgencies that we have all over the place. Furthermore, when people behave the way our allies behave, in which they form private armies, in which they have military groups with which they compromise the integrity of the election. How can they have the security? Most of the people you find in Boko Haram, especially the ones who left Kuche prison, who broke out of Kuche prison, and were recently arrested, about two of them who have been rearrested, they were all found with drugs, either in Graham, uh, Tramadol, or some of these other narcotics. If they were religious people, if they were that pious, would they be engaging or indulging themselves with drugs? You see, they are not simply uh, because uh, they, call, they thank were you used so as tools in the hands of the politicians. We have to bring it to an end now. Thank you, Tunde Kolawale. Great insight you have brought uh, this morning uh, as we look through the pages of a national dailies. To be precise, the front pages. Uh, we appreciate your time, Tunde Kolawale. Thanks for having me. All right, Tunde Kolawale is a legal practitioner and has been our guest this morning. On Off the Press, we take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to head straight to our first conversation right here. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history.